Hello, I'm Shane Sweden and welcome back to uh, part 5 on our series of videos on how to build an intrusion detection system. On the last video, we actually started to create our first unit test and it's time to move on. You'll notice when we built our substitute for our sensor, we actually didn't build any sensor at all. So perhaps that's where we can start. So let's create a new test. And here we actually didn't create a sensor. So let's just rename that one to create use sub sensor. And this one would be, we will actually create a real sensor. Now we don't have any sensor, so we've got to create a sensor class. We can see that the sensor has to have a property, which it now does. So let's just change this to a get set. And we don't need the rest of this. As we said before, one of the one of the items which we'll want to change a lot is the traffic information source. This could be all sorts of things. So at the moment we can use it as a public method, but it probably would be better coming in and use a constructor. So let's get rid of that. And then let's create a constructor. One possible constructor we're gonna send is our information source. And then we set the uh, the variable. Okay. Let's we'll change that to a public. Although I'm not actually sure we need that at all. In fact, let's just make it private until we actually have a need for it to be anything other than private. Okay. And so now we're not actually going to act. We're not going to set the information there. We're going to set the information source here. Okay. And we want to create a very simple information source here. So rather than using a fake as we had in the last test, let's call this a simple information source and we obviously need to create that one so now we have a simple information source which implements our i network information source method with our simple information source we need some way to add a network message and we want to do something simple here. So we're just going to create a list of strings. And we call that message buffer. And when we call the add network message, we add those messages to the buffer. We don't need a set parameter, but and the get just does a return message buffer can't. Okay. Uh -huh. Here we've got a problem. We've set the interface to be a get and a set. So we go to our interface. Let's just take away the set for it. Okay. So we've got our class for instance information source. We can add messages to it and we can even get our buffer counts, but we should also add a constructor to it. And so let's do that. When we construct it, we have to create a new instance of our list. Okay, so we now created a simple information class that allows us to add messages to it and returns the number of messages that it contains. But the information source here is private, so we're not actually able to get it. We'd probably want to keep the information source internal. Uh, and here we're counting up the number of messages in the information source. But really what we want to be doing is we'd want to know for our sensor how many messages it hasn't processed yet. We would have um, under sensor count, change that, sensor dot unread buffer count. 
So let's implement that. So on red buffer count under sensor. And here we've got it, and that will return. its own information data source buffer count and will not have a set on that pretty much okay uh, oh and of course they got the same name so let's just uh, change to that it'll do for the moment and here it can be made read only that's a pretty good idea okay, let's clean that up I'd love resharper. Okay, so in our new test here, we're creating a real information information source which implements the uh, I network traffic information source, and we want to test that it contains a number of buffers. So we can actually run our test, and we're getting an error on the test, uh, and we can see the error is a n substitute error, which is a method of return, and of course we're doing a buffer count return. We're faking that in our test, uh, but the buffer count property doesn't exist anymore. So let's just remove that and let's run the test again. And we're getting a green light on our test. That's great. So here we're creating a real uh, sensor class uh, and we're actually fetching the real buffer count, the number of messages, which is of course different from the original test where everything was sort of faked and uh, unreal. So we're moving away from um, mocks for test purposes to real classes that we instantiate. Uh, and by injecting our information source into the sensor class using the uh, strategy pattern here, uh, we're protecting ourselves from the volatilities of the future when we may want to change out the data source to something else. Now you might be wondering why do we actually have these classes? Why are these classes here, sensor, simple information source? I network track permissions on our interfaces and our classes and stuff all in the same file as our tests. Well, the reason is is because we want to move fast, move in an agile way. We want to create tests and then code from that. But none of these are actually in anywhere near their final form. We don't even know in the final solution if we're actually going to have these classes. So until we're we're reasonably certain that an object exists for its own sake and not just a a temporary stage in promoting our development through our test. It's just as handy at the moment to actually keep them in our test class. Okay, so what should our next test be? Well, we're creating a test. A network sensor receives information. Okay, and we've actually done that by adding network messages to it. We've implemented that a little bit. And then it checks this information against the rule sets. Well, okay, we have our sensor and it has some messages. So what's it going to do with that? Well, let's create a new test. And here we're going to use create, let's change this to create simple. We're going to create another simple, create simple sensor. Information says normal data. And this one's going to uh, check uh, process, process message correctly. Okay, so we're going to add, as before, we're going to create a simple information source. We're going to add some data to that information source, and then we're going to feed it into our sensor. And then the sensor is going to check. The sensor is going to check the information, uh, take one message, process it, check if it meets some criteria, and if it does, then it will do something. So let's just start off with, let's create a result, which is... Well, what are the results of this message or this processing? Well, th let's keep it very simple. Let's just assume that the result here is a boolean. So, and we're going to check that the result is uh, true. Okay. And also, once we've processed the number of messages, then the number of messages unprocessed should decreased by one. So now we can assert that the um, 
number of messages available is or um, the number of messages which have not been processed so far has been reduced by one. So let's con create this method. Okay, and here we're going to look at the next message. Now, we could obviously in a very, very simple way, we know that our information source here is gonna give us a message. So um, if we can call this a string. I just say is the same. And our information source obviously must have some way of giving us our messages one by one. So we're going to call the information source and get the next message. And at the moment we'll just say if a message contains, call this hacking attempt. then we return true otherwise uh, we return false and here we're going to create the method so we've got the interface and we need to apply that in our class okay now what does the get message do? It actually just returns the message from our list. And we probably want to process the messages in the order that they arrive. So we need to uh, return message buffer Okay, it's going to return the first or default so that it won't crash if there's no method message there. Actually now we also need to remove the message, so let's change that. Let's do a quick check. If a message buffer, if the message buffer contains anything, then we want to return the next message. We're not going to do first or default here because now we know this message there should be one and if there isn't we would want to know why so we actually do want to create an exception. Otherwise we return nothing. Uh, string dot empty. And we want to uh, check for that. Okay. We not only want to return the message, we actually want to remove it from the processed messages, unprocessed messages. So let's just change that around. And then we want to delete that message from the buffer. And then we want to return the message. Right, so now if we go back to our test, this should uh, work, um, but we want the result to be true, so we better add a message uh, that actually contains hacking attempt. And let's add it first. So that when we pr process our method, it'll actually, when we process our first message, it will actually give us a true result as we expected. So let's run our test. Okay, that's looking good. And let's just run all tests. Great. So now we should actually create a few tests to see what happens if there are no messages at all and we attempt to process the next message. Boundary cases would be the next thing I would actually normally do here. But in the interest of brevity, we'll just carry on. Um, but I think it's enough now. We're actually starting to see, if you look at what we've achieved here, created a simple information source, which has some methods. Get that message, which allows the sensor to take messages one by one and process them. And here we're actually doing our first check on the network traffic, to see if there's any information. And the project's moving forward. But that's enough for now. The source code of, of the project at this stage 
is available video notes um, I think there's a link there to github so if you want to download this source code and look at it yourself uh, feel free and that's uh, all for this video and I'll see you in the next part thank you very much